Hi, I'm Callum from Town Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of a Chasson Welcome 737. So starting the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first. This is your LPG locker, so this is where your gas bottles live. So you've got one habitation key which opens the locks. And in here you can fit two gas bottles. So we've got our six kilogram propane color bottle on there for test at the moment. So what you do first when you put your bottle in is strap them in. You can probably get a six and a 11 in there, 13 and a push I would say. And then to connect your pigtail, which is this pipe here, what you need to do is it's a left hand thread. So opposite threads would be in gas. So you would left to tighten, right to loosen, tighten it into the bottle turn the bottle on and off from the top of the cylinder always make sure that the bottle is then turned off before you do start driving as it's a lot safer when you're on the road to have your gas isolated but well, that's your gas locker you've got your habitation door which works off the central locking or you can open it manually all you need to do is hit the unlock and lock button and it'll lock the cab and this door Awning, oil and light, two fridge vents. Then just behind the back driver's wheel is your waste outlet. So your grey dirty water. So this is anything that you've drained off via a plug hole. And all you need to do is on the way out of your site, just go over the grid, pull the handle. So push it in, pull it out to open, and this will drain off any dirty water that's on board because you don't want to travel with this because it will add weight to the vehicle that you don't necessarily need and always make sure that in the winter that this point is fully drained down as you wouldn't want the water to freeze and cause any damage we've got an easy chef barbecue system here from Dometic so all you need to do is slide the barbecue out like so and then you can use it you've got your, your skillet there we can lift that up and you've got three burners so it's up to you how you use it and then always allow it to cool down so it's cool enough before that you slide it back into the vehicle Here you have your garage at the back so you've got some storage underneath but then you do have these shelves which are removable they're just velcro so if you want to stand something here you can take all three shelves out you can't access it from in the garage as well so if you need bits and pieces in the van you can store them here as well at the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light your parking sensors on the bottom which has been an additional fitment as well as the reversing camera and then you do have reels where a bike rack can be taken where the back panel has been strengthened to take the added weight and then you do have your Kadak your Kadak your cassette toilet <laughs> so this is your cassette toilet to get the cassette out you need to lift the orange handle and slide the cassette free of the vehicle you can then carry it or you can drag it with the wheels to the waste disposal point which is normally beside your toilet block and then to empty it's very simple you simply need to just take this grey cap off press the orange button and tip the content of the cassette out once you've tipped it out if you put some water in there and give it a slight rinse tip out again and then you can put a measurement of the blue or the green chemical which is about 120 milliliters into here and tip it into there or you can just do it by eye and tip your chemical down into here so that when you put it back into the vehicle you can use it as the chemicals in and it will break down what it needs to this is underneath the bed and your boilers back here and this is your boiler drain so this is what's called a truma anti-frost valve so at three degrees when the vehicle's not in use and it detects three degrees it will drop the water so it's 10 litres of water in the boiler at any one time obviously that stops the water from freezing in the boiler when it's cold but what I would do is when you decide to park the van up and not use it for a couple of months 
because you, you've got more things going on, Christmas, that sort of stuff. I would then come and open this valve manually myself. So all you need to do is turn the diamond on the top from side to side to front and back. The button will pop out and you'll see the water squirting out underneath. And that's warm water at the moment because we've had the boiler on. Leave it open in this position and then open all the taps throughout the vehicle. It allows the air to stop air locking and any water from sitting in the pipes and bursting pipes. Then when you're ready to reuse it, if you turn the diamond on the top first, obviously you'll, you'll open your fresh new waste as well, but you turn the diamond on the top first, push the button in, that is the boiler closed. If that button keeps popping out, all you need to do is you need to put your heating on first, get this area nice and warm because this area can be cold and that's why that's detecting the button keeps popping out. So put the space heater on first, get the area warm for 10 minutes. Then when the button pushes in, that's the valve closed. You can then shut your fresh, shut your waste, fill the vehicle, shut all your taps inside and fill the vehicle manually with water by a hose pipe and bleed the water through from the cold side first with the pump on in the panel. Cold side first, you'll get a cold water feed of water straight away. Go to the hot side and it'll cough and sputter until you get a free flow of water from the hot side which can take anywhere from three to five minutes. And then one, one tap's doing, doing the wall and then your system is then primed for the season. But remember, drain that off because it's not covered under warranty so just open that valve. You've got your vent for your diesel heater. So this is obviously a true my diesel heater um, on diesel that lets the vent vent out. Mains hook up point. So this is how to hook the vehicle up if you are charging it at home or on a site. So you get your hooker bleed, lift the collar, hook the van up first, then walk to the other end and hook the vehicle up and hook the point up and then do it in reverse order when unhooking along with pushing the blue clip down and releasing the cable. This is known as your Technibox locker. So in here, you've got where you fill with fresh water. So grab yourself a hose pipe and some hose pipe connections as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. Put the flat end of the hose that side, then you'll need the screw on and the hose lock end for the sides tap and fill it until it overflows or until you're happy there is enough water on board the vehicle which you can see on the panel so i'll go through that when i'm inside should you have filled it full and you're now ready to travel and you want to travel with 20 liters as you want to make the most of the little bit extra weight and better fuel consumption you can lift this handle here which is known as a travel drain so that lifting that up Going inside, putting the pump on and opening the tap will drain the, this tank off from full to 20 litres. So you've still got enough to use a, the toilet, have a cup of tea and you've got water on board but you haven't got the extra weight of carrying a full tank of water. In here you do have your fuses which are on 12 volts, so carry some spare ones. You've got your battery charger and you do have your main... RCD and MCB trip switches. You've got your diesel filler at the passenger door which opens with the main key for the van. So you flip key, you can open your diesel filler and fill with diesel fuel. Tire pressures, five bar on the front, which is 72.3 PSI, and five and a half on the back, which is 79.5 PSI. So that's your tire pressures there. Your leisure battery lives underneath your cab seat on the passenger side. This panel in the floor is where your engine battery lives, so you've got to take that off to get access to your engine battery. And your bonnet release is on the side of the dashboard. So underneath the bonnet, I've got all your fluids to the left hand side. The main one you're gonna need is your screen wash. Then removing these three tabs, you can gain access to your power steering fluid, your coolant, and then you've got your brake fluid. You've got your oil filler and dipstick, along with your paint cord on this silver sticker. 
As the battery's underneath the cab floor, you do have a jumping point underneath the bonnet. So here is the earth. And between the air filter and the headlight, put your key into here, lift it up. This is your positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start. And then you do have your weight plates, so three and a half ton gross vehicle weight, five and a half ton. So whatever your vehicle and whatever you're towing can't exceed five and a half ton. So it does give you a two ton towing limit if you do have a tow bar fitted. To operate your chassis on control panel. So if you turn it on here on the master switch, which will either turn on 12 volt if you're not hooked up, or if you are hooked up, you'll have this little light on here, which means you're receiving 230 volt. And then the next button is the master switch for your lights. So you need to make sure that you've got the master switch turned on for all the lights to work individually, because they are switched. You also need to make sure this is on for your drop down bed and your drop down tables to work and your ignition on your Cougar hob grill as that's how it's wired via the 12 volt system. You've got your water pump here so this is your pump you need to turn your pump on should you want pressurized water to your taps toilet and shower or exterior shower. Making sure that you have enough water on board before you turn this on. And then you do have your on and light on the outside of the vehicle. These buttons here correspond with these on the bottom. So you've got the one of the trailer, which is your leisure battery reading. Take the hook about to get a true reading of the battery. Then you've got the one of the truck, which is your engine battery reading. Wiggly lines, which is water. So your fresh water reading. So you've got a full tank of fresh water on board. When that goes red, it indicates that the fresh water now needs to refill. And when this one starts flashing, it means the waste water needs to be emptied. Top read the Truma CP digital control panel. So to turn the system on and off, you'd press and hold. It'll turn off, press and hold, it'll turn on. And then to enter the menu, you'd press once and you'll get a motorhome with a thermometer in the top right flashing. This is the temperature that you want the inside of the motorhome to be. So you can have all the way to 30 degrees or you can have all the way to off if you didn't want the heating on at all. So once you're happy with the temperature selected, all you need to do is press the button in the middle and that's preset the thermostat to the temperature that you have set. Moving along, you've got a thermometer in some water this is your hot water system so if you don't have any water on board or your boilers open then have it off but if you have got water on board you can have it on eco which is 40 degrees of heating your water hot which is 60 degrees of heating your water and then you've got boost which will turn off the heating prioritize your water first and then the heating will come back on once the water's to temperature so for this we'll just say hot which is 60 degrees and then moving on, you've got your energy source. So you don't have gas on this one. It's diesel, so fuel is diesel. So if you're wild camping, you'd have to use diesel to heat your vehicle and your water. You can have mixture one, which is 750 watts of electric and diesel. You can have mixture two, which is 1500 watts of electric and diesel. So you'd use this if you're away in the winter and it was really cold or you are in desperate need of heating or hot water because both sources together will reduce the time it takes to heat the vehicle or the water. And then you've got EL1, which is 750 watts of electric. So you'd use this on smaller CL sites or abroad or airs. And then EL2 is 1500 watts of electric. So if you're on a site, you've paid your site fees, you'll use this one rather than wasting your diesel as you've paid for your electric. So you'd use EL2, which is 1500 watts of electric. Then you've got a fan in the top. Right hand corner. So you can have it on Eco or high, eco is a smaller feed of 12 volt. High obviously uses the full fan speed. 
but it's a little bit louder on an evening so if you wanted to go to sleep with the heating on low put it on eco obviously high circulates the heat around the vehicle you've got a timer in the bottom corner so you can time it to come on and off just the once time on the main display panel and then in the corner you can reset the panel by going to set and press reset, press preset and it will completely restart the panel should you have should you be experiencing any problems you can reset the panel and most times you just need to reset the panel because it can just go a bit funny from time to time it's just a common thing on these And then you just go back in, set your heating, your water, your fuel type, and your energy source. So now in the kitchen, you've got three gas burner hobs. You'll need to use a light of some sort to ignite it because it doesn't have an ignition on it. So. So there you go, you've got three lit gas rings. Once you've had them on, allow them to cool, so they're cool enough to cool down before putting the glass lid down. You've got your pan size diagram there, so it tells you a maximum pan size you can use. And you've got two splash guards on there, so you can pop them down to stop the splash from getting onto the worktop. Underneath, cutlery drawer, pushing the catch in to lock that into place. And then you do have a Fed Fed Triplex oven and grill. So operate So if you've had the gas on, pull it through first, so there's the oven away There's the grill And then you do have a light which is on the switch just here So you can turn the light on and off you may want to remove your grill pan and oven shelf when travelling or wrap it up as it can cause a little bit of noise when on the road. Slide out drawer underneath your oven. And then you've got two slide out pan drawers with a 230 volt socket here. So if you are hooked up, that'll work. If you're not, it'll not work because you've not got main power on board. And then you do have a little light just underneath the worktop with the storage cupboard above. So to operate your Dometic fridge freezer, so you've got large freezer box, fridge. It's all controlled through the middle here. So you turn on and off by pressing and holding the button. Turn it off, turn it on. A stands for automatic energy selection. So what that will do is, the brain of the fridge will pick out the best source you have available and it will use electric where it can. So at the moment we've got a gas bottle on the back and we've got it hooked up. It knows not to waste gas so it's went to mains power. If I was to take the hook about it would switch over to gas and if I was to start the vehicle it would go to 12 volt and it would keep the 12 volt setting you need to pre-chill beforehand for it to work properly otherwise there's no real use of it being on as it's not going to get any colder on 12 volts you've got to pre-chill it on either gas or electric first and then put your shopping in the night before or if you've been to one site and you're ready to go to the next your shopping will be fresh when you start up on automatic it will switch over to 12 volt and as long as you travel it should keep your shopping nice and fresh Failing that you can change it manually so you can take the air off, it's on the hookup, mains 240 volt, it'll act as a mains household fridge. Battery, code 6, loss of 12 volt because it's not getting any because the vehicle's not started. And then gas, you would should use if you were wild camping and you had no other way of cooling the fridge than using gas. Temperature here, so 5, put on full blast when cooling down. When you put your shopping in you might just want to turn it down as it sometimes does 
freeze the fridge and the freezer and then you've got your frame heater here so you can turn that on and that'll stop the door rubbers from getting stuck to the frame when operating on full temperature when you are finished with the fridge just clean it out give it a wipe out take everything out no matter if you're leaving it for a couple of weeks or a few months in the winter when you're not using it you've got to leave the doors open because you will start to get smells in the vehicle off the fridge if the air is trapped inside of it but what you can do is underneath both you've got these little toggles so you've got one there we'll get that one replaced then it needs to go in there same with the other one once it gets there'll be one put on there i'll make sure you would pop it into there and it would keep the doors ajar and you can get air circulation in and out of the fridge and freezer to stop the smells and then when you're traveling you can pop the travel catch on on the bottom to stop the door from opening on itself if it ever did if you went over a bumpy road and the door decided to open it would stop it because the travel catch is on above the fridge in the cupboard is your status 570 tv aerial so on the amplifier it's got a green light which means it's got a signal and you can adjust the booster of the amplifier should you be getting a good enough signal or should it be too strong and you're getting a pixelated picture you can bring the booster down and try to get the right quality picture on your tv but should you be struggling for a signal this will go either orange or red and then you need to adjust the aerial so what you need to do is unscrew the nut push the stem up and use the toggle on the bottom here to direct the aerial but look where your other motorhomes and caravans are pointing point them in the similar direction and you should get a good enough signal and then always before you set off pull the TV aerial in and tighten the nut to stop the wind from damaging the TV aerial so to operate your drop down bed it's a manual bed so all you need to do is grab a hold of it give it a good pull down and then release the catches because all they do with the strings is keep this away from the mechanism when you're pushing the bed up and down so there's one front and back just release these and then you'll be able to use the bed obviously sleep with your heads at this end feet at this end as it's wider this side of the bed make sure that you take your pillows off before you put the bed up you can leave your duvets on and then obviously your ladder will just clip on here and the safety net if you're putting children in which clip onto these around the perimeter of the bed and then when you put it up push it up and then attach the safety belt as a safety feature before you start traveling with the bed up very good across the back of the vehicle you do have your washroom so you've got your shower cubicle here making sure that the doors are tied back before you do start traveling it'll keep them nice and safe and secure and then when you winterize like i was saying you always need to remove your shower head from the hose because you don't want any water to sit coiled up in here so you'd take it off the hose lie the hose in the shower tray and put the tap open in the mixer position just so just so any water behind the system can get out and there's no air locking caused in the in the system here you do have a reel for wet towels but also doubles up great if you've had wet being caught out in the rain with wet coat wet clothing hang them up there on hangers shut the washroom door and put the heating on it gets lovely and warm in the back of the vehicle so the, these will dry in no time and then you do have a ventilation hatch in the skylight so turn that and you'll be able to open the skylight ventilation after you've used the shower washroom hand basin toilet week drawer then you've got some more cabinets here for your toiletries a hanging rail for a towel hanging rail for another towel cup holders 
There is your washroom light. This is the most question we get asked. I can't turn my lights off in my washroom and my shots out. I can't find the switch. It's just on the side of the sink. And then to operate the toilet, what you would do is you press this blue button here and it'll give you flush. So you'll you'll be able to flush the toilet. So you press and put some flush water in the toilet first. Always flush to keep the seal lubricated between the blade and the cassette first before you use the toilet. Then what you would do is you would open the blade, so you'd slide this blade handle, which is a grey lever, towards you, to the right. You would then use the toilet, and then after use, press the blue button again, flush the toilet, and then close the blade, which is sliding it back to the left. That will then disengage the mechanism which means you can then get the cassette out the outside of the vehicle when it indicates on here that the cassette is now full storage which you can't access from outside so you've got three shelves so now in the cab to the right of the driver is where your handbrake is located and then on the door cards, you've got the driver and passenger electric windows. And then you do have your electric mirror adjustment. So there's two mirrors on each side, being the top and the blind spot, so you can adjust them all electronically from in the cab. And then on the driver and passenger doors you do have Remus car blinds so if you pinch slide along you can blacken out both doors on an evening and it's the same for the windscreen so you just pinch slide it in clip them together they are just on a magnetic strip you've got your headlight adjustment and your rear fog lights your trip computer on the end of your wiper stalk so when you press trip i'll go through your range how much miles is left in your fuel tank your average and instant consumption your traveling times and your distance traveled if you want to reset that you just press and hold you've got all your steering wheel controls here your lights and your indicators and then you do have off Turn the top one, you've got cruise control, so get your desired speed and push it up. And then should you need to speed up, you can push it up or pull it down to slow down. And then go at the bottom, which is a speed limiter. So it'll say under the day, it says 30 at the moment. If you press and hold, it goes up in five mile an hour increments. If you press it, and tap it up slowly it goes up in one mile an hour increments it then says off to turn it on you need to press the end so the cancel resume button for the cruise control you need to press it and it'll now say nothing so it doesn't have off underneath it that's now on so if you're going through a 50 mile an hour speed camera zone you can put the speed limiter on and it won't override the speed limiter unless you floor the vehicle by lifting your foot off the accelerator and pushing the accelerator flat to the floor as it's a safety feature in case you had to avoid a collision in the road six speed manual gearbox with lift the collar into reverse which will bring on the reverse camera on the head unit and the sensors on this model traction control plus so if you were stuck on grass or wet grass gravel and you're struggling for traction you can turn that on hill descent control which is not available because it's a manual this is more for automatics hazard lights Locks the doors, including the habitation door on an evening. Just make sure all your other lockers are turned and locked. And then you do have your heated mirrors, followed by a USB for charging and a 12 volt for charging. Two cup holders with a 
USB and a 3.5 milli auxiliary jack in there. You've got your temperature on the outside ring on the left hand side and your fan speed on the in. Must be on fan speed one or more for the aircon to work which is this button here. And then you've got on the outside ring on the right hand side your distribution so whether you wanted to go to your face your feet your screen and whether you're at the bottom whether you're bringing fresh air in or recirculating there and finally to operate your radio so you turn it on here So you've got an FM AM radio, so you can press FM and AM to change the source or you can browse and you can browse all your radio stations and refresh the list. Press 1 to 3 or all to save 12 of your favourite stations. You've got media which is obviously a CD or auxiliary input either 3.5 milli jack or USB nav so you've got your navigation which is powered by TomTom so you just press navigation navigate to and you want to put an address in there and you can want to put your postcode or city in there and if you ever go abroad with the van you can just press the United Kingdom flag here and change it to the country you want to go to and then you'll be able to put your coordinates in for France and Spain in there and then finally to pair a phone all you need to do is press hit phone no phone connected pair a phone question mark yes add a device you want to find you connect on your phone it'll ask if the pins match just press yes then it'll ask you if you want to download your contacts just press allow and it'll download your phone book into the vehicle so that you can scroll through your contacts